I am so, 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 so excited for the art fairs coming this fall. I know if you are a true artist, true collector, and you pay attention to what's going on, you're excited too. And first up this year, the first one we're talking about is the Armory Show. It's returning to New York City this year with more than 145 exhibitors from the last year, from the previous edition, returning, including renowned galleries like 303 Gallery, Gallery of Raquel Renaud, and Kazman. In addition, over 25 galleries are returning to the fair after a hiatus, including Marion Bosky Gallery and Jeffrey Deitch. That's, that's huge, and I'm excited about it. Now, newcomers to the Armory Show include Corbett versus Dempsey, which is in Chicago, Commons Wealth and Council, which is in Los Angeles and in Mexico City, and The Experimenter, which is in Kolkata, Mumbai. The Armory Show has also revealed its curators for 2024, Eugenie Tsai, Lauren Cornell, and Robin Farrell. Now, Eugenie Tsai is an independent curator, and she will curate the platform section that's going to be showcasing large-scale installations and site-specific works. Robin Farrell is a senior curator at the kitchen i don't know if you guys have heard of it but look it up we'll be curating the focus section which re-engages with the avant-garde spirit of the fair's early days lauren Cornell, who is the chief curator of the hessel museum of art and the director of the graduate program at the center for cultural studies at bard college will chair the seventh annual curatorial leadership summit now this is all steered by nicole berry who is the executive director of the armory show this year's fair seems to promise to push boundaries of what we call contemporary art even further. Now, if there's any year that needs to make a huge push, it's this year. Anyway, if you're still thinking about taking a trip yourself, it's taking place at the Javits Center from September 6th to 8th, 2024. Again, that's in New York. And also, if you have the privilege, the VIP preview opens on September 5th. Now, the VIP privilege is by invitation only, and it runs from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, public hours are Friday, September 6th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. September 7th, from 11 to 7 p.m. And Sunday, September 8th, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And before we really get into the nitty gritty, before we get too far, what's going on, Glorify? I'm Mariah Elise, an art advisor dedicated to continue learning so that I can continue educating you on the nuances of the art world, and this is Dear Glory. I want to start with a little bit of history. In 1994, four visionary New York art dealers embarked on an ambitious journey to create a new kind of art fair, one that would support their artists and capture the intention of the world. Now, little did they know, they were about to spark a cultural revolution that would help shape the New York art scene and art market and far beyond. Now, since its inception, the Armory Art Show has been more than just an art fair. It's been a galvanizing force in the art world, driving innovation and setting the stage for countless artists to make their mark. Over the past 30 years, the show has evolved, of course, but its core remains unchanged to be a platform for creativity, diversity, and artistic expression. Art fairs like the Armory Show play a crucial, crucial role in the arts ecosystem. You guys know we talk a lot about the arts ecosystem. Now keep in mind that art fairs are major, major parts of the arts ecosystem. They are more than just events. They're marketplaces, they're networking hubs, and they're cultural barometers. Now that's the most important part I want you guys to hear. They're cultural barometers that reflect the pulse of the contemporary art world. You should be able to go to these fairs and see what are the galleries liking? What are the collectors collecting at the time? You should be able to kind of take a look around and know what the market is looking like. Now for artists, art fairs offer unparalleled exposure, okay? They provide a unique opportunity to present their work to a global international audience, connect with potential collectors and gain recognition from curators and uh, critics. Now for collectors, Art fairs are a vital part of their collecting journey. They offer access to a diverse range of works, the chance to discover emerging talent, and the opportunity to make informed purchases in a dynamic setting. For galleries, we already know they're getting their artists out there. They're reaching international markets. It's important for every part of the ecosystem. Now, if you're a collector and you're looking and you're searching for guidance in navigating the art market, I would really love to be your art advisor. My goal is to help you make informed decisions, build a collection that resonates with you, and make sure that your investments are sound. I want you to see if we're a good fit and take that assessment quiz, the, the, the compatibility assessment linked in the description below. That assessment is going to help us understand your goals. And if we align and from that assessment, you can schedule a 15 minute consultation. We'll dig a little bit deeper and see if we're a good fit for one another and to what your goals as a collector are. Now, the heart 
of the Armory Show lies in the gallery section, where leading galleries from around the world present dramatic dual artists and solo artist exhibitions. I can't go through the entire list, guys. If you want to know the entire list of galleries that'll be showing for each section, go to armory.com because I can't go over the entire list. It's way too many. I'm going to be highlighting key galleries that are showing key artists here on this video. Now this year at ACA Gallery, the spotlight is on Candy G. Lopez, an Afro-Caribbean American artist whose monumental works in fiber explore identity and otherness with deep metaphorical and psychological significance. I've been introduced to Candy Lopez's work quite a few times and I really enjoy it. But if you know anything about me and you've seen half of the work that I love, I really, really love fiber and materiality. I haven't had the opportunity to see her work in person. I don't think maybe I've seen it at one of the fairs. It's the fairs are so much work. It's so much, it's so overwhelming. You almost miss some of the work that you see, but from what I see via pictures, website, Instagram, et cetera, I really, really enjoy her work. Yeah. But anyway, Candy G Lopez is going to be highlighted for the ACI gallery. Now at James Cohen's gallery, James Cohen's presentation, it's a nod to diversity, um, featuring works celebrating artists like Yinka Shonaber and Spencer Finch. I love, love, love Yinka's approach to sculpture. I do wonder what medium James Cohen will be bringing. I can't wait to see how this booth is curated because if you look at Yinka and Spencer's work, um, they're both so dynamic. I'm just curious to see how they're gonna curate this booth. I uh, can't wait to see that. Moving on, Harper's brings together this explosive group of artists, Hajini Young Choi and Joanny Tremblay, offering this compelling mix of styles and mediums that are really pushing the boundaries of contemporary art. And, and, and I know I say that a lot, like I know that comes out of my mouth, pushing the boundaries of contemporary art, but so many artists are actually pushing boundaries. And Hajini Young Choi, I, I'm a fan. If you guys have ever seen, again, the work that I enjoy, I'm such a fan of these inverted colors and these heat map like sensations. And I'm really, really enjoying their work. It's not often I run across artists and I stay just captivated by their work for a while. Hajini Yang Choi is one of those artists that I stayed because I enjoy world building. They're creating a world and it's really captivating. Take a look at it more in depth if you get the chance. Half Gallery is gonna present the enigmatic works of Yukima Saida, whose exploration of distorted figurations invites viewers into this world where abstraction and reality kind of blur. Listen, again, if you guys have been watching what's going on, so many abstract artists are blending this abstract and this figuration and, and I don't want to compare this to Jennifer Packer because the work looks nothing like Jennifer Packer, but a lot of artists are kind of going towards this blend of abstraction and figuration. It soon may be oversaturated, but there is a very keen focus on this right now, okay? Although none of these artists I'm mentioning today are um, on are not on the list of some of the videos I've mentioned before. Uh, many of them fall into the same wavelengths. They're similar stylistically. Remember these fairs keep a good pulse on what's happening next, and what's happening now in the art world. Now, next we're gonna talk about the solo part of the Armory Show, which spotlights emerging artists. The solo section of the Armory Show is dedicated to intimate single artist uh, presentations. And here I wanna shine some light on Spinello Projects, who will be showcasing the New York the New York debut of S.A. Alfredo. Landscapes and narrative-driven figurations explore figuration, uh, queerness, and cinematic storytelling, transporting viewers to this otherworldly terrain um, inspired by his travels. But now before we get into the focus section, which is curated by Robin Farrell, I want to remind you all, don't forget to join my upcoming free webinar, Introduction to Art Collecting, on September 18th, 2024, from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So it's going to show up for some of you guys as 8 p.m. It's going to show up, if you're central for me, it's going to show up for 6 p.m. But we are doing this at 7 to 7.30 Eastern Time. I'm so excited about all the webinars we have coming up. Uh, you guys are signing up like crazy, so I'm really, really excited to do this with you guys. It allows us to get a lot more personal with one another, and if you want to get more personal than a webinar, you, we can privately consult. In this webinar, we're going to equip you with the essentials of navigating the art market, identify 
how to find works you love, identifying valuable works, setting a budget and making informed purchasing decisions. So if you're an aspiring collector or you're a collector that wants to brush up on their skills, please join the webinar. It's going to be a good one. It's going to give you the confidence to just continue building or start building your own collection. The link to register is in the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. Now curated by Robin Farrell, the focus section re-engages the experimental spirit that redefines the, the Armory Show's early days. Now, this year we're focusing on Monique Meloche Gallery, which is a gallery that I have visited quite a few times. And every time I go, I am I enjoy myself. I really love the work that they show. I really love the work that they're doing with quite a few of the artists that they're working with. But this year, they are presenting a major installation by Ebony G. Patterson. Her work addresses themes of visibility, race, and violence within post-colonial spaces, challenging viewers to confront uncomfortable truths. Now, the way that this work brings you in is crazy. I mean, again, I know I keep saying I've never seen this work in person, but y'all, it's almost impossible to see all of these artists and all of their work in person, but this will be my chance to see it in person. <laughs> um, and I can't go. And I hope at some point that I do, but it brings you in in such a way that if you are there, please take pictures and share them with me. Please, please, please take videos. I would really appreciate it. Uh, Ebony G. Patterson, I'm captivated by her work. Thank you, Monique Meloche, for bringing this to us. So anyway, I want to talk about the present section, which is a platform for emerging galleries. Now, I think that this is one of the most important sections of the Armory's show, the fair. Um, if you're a collector, don't pass this section up <laughs> because in this section is where you're going to find those really good looks on who's coming next, who could be really it. You'll probably also get really, really good prices, really good affordable prices from artists that are doing amazing work, still get beautiful work. It's for galleries no more than 10 years old. So they're offering a fresh perspective on the art scene. Now, if you've made it to 10 years, you might be okay. It's a lot of galleries opening and closing and opening and closing. Um, but anyway, for them to be taking the initiative at such an early stage gallery to uh, present in an art fair and to come to an art fair. It's a really good sign. I love this part of the fair. I think that it's very important to see what galleries are young and also participating in fairs. Another gallery in the present section is the Jack Berry Gallery, highlighting the works of Haley Joseph and Ben Tong, whose bold explorations of color and form are creating this amazing uh, visual dialogue with one another. I also want to talk about Ko, who's presenting a collaborative exploration of textiles and mythologies by Nashinku Rindorf, Ado Ribeiro. Their works dig into identity, heritage, and a sense of place, bringing culture and consonants together. Now, the next section we're going to talk about is the platform section, which brings large scale installations into the fair. Now, the platform section is curated by Eugenie Tsai, and it examines how art historical reverberations are echoing in the present, through the present. Now, these large scale uh, installations and site specific works is challenging viewers to rethink the boundaries of how far we can push things. In this section, I want to highlight that Turn Gallery is proud to present and exhibit a solo exhibition by April Bay. This body of work also highlights Bay's integrations of AI and other forms of technology. She's incorporating ancient techniques like sewing and weaving, uh, but integrating more recent photo altering softwares. I think that should be really interesting to see. I'm really also excited to see how she interwines or intertwines these uh, AI integrations into uh, these more traditional techniques. Now, it's important to know that most, if not all, art fairs include off-site activations and lectures as a part of their programming. Now, these are some of my favorite parts of a fair. The Armory Show offers a year-round program of conversations and events highlighting influential members of the international art community, both before and during the fair in New York City. The Armory Show's Cultural Leadership Summit is an annual invitation-only day-long program aimed at fostering innovation in the curatorial landscape. Previous summits have invited museum directors, curators from around the world to explore, debate, and challenge important topics within the cultural community. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. Following the closed door session, panelists develop a keynote presentation open to the public. So it's not just super closed off. After they have their closed door session, then there's an open door session, which is open to the public. 
Now, the fourth iteration of Armory Offsite presents public artworks that span performances and activations across New York, including large scale sculptures at the US Open, which I thought was pretty amazing and pretty cool. For example, Oliver Herring's ongoing project as Nureyev, as Najinsky, as Fawn, is hosted by Bank, um, a gallery that's out of Shanghai, and Maria Magdalena Campos Prawn's Possession of Angels for Radical Love and Unity is presented by Madison, Madison Square Park in partnership with the Harlem Art Park. And uh, another notable project is Body Freedom for Everybody, which is a cross-country mobile exhibition inside a 27-foot truck presented by Project for Empty Space. I really love this idea to take a 27-foot truck and have an exhibition that travels. I think it's groundbreaking. Let me know in the comments if you've seen something like this before. I've never seen nothing like this before. Let me know in the comments if you've seen something like this before. I think it's an amazing idea. It's celebrating body autonomy and intersecting themes of reproductive justice, queer liberation, and trans joy. The Armory Show also is partnering for the third time Time with the USTA to present four large-scale sculptures at the Billie Jean King uh, National Tennis Center again during the US Open. Y'all stop by and see that. That's going to be amazing. That's running from August 26th, so it should be open already to September 8th, 2024. Now they do have a not-for-profit, a non-profit section promoting visual artists and beyond the commercial galleries, the Armory Show also profits with these not-for-profit organizations like Tate Museum and Aperture. And these institutions are sharing common missions, of course, to promote visual arts to both collectors um, and the general public. Yeah, so for 30 years, the Armory Show has been at the forefront of the art world, shaping trends, challenging norms, and providing a platform for artists to do their thing, to shine, for galleries to do their thing, to shine, and for collectors to come and see them shine and then be a part of that. But more than that, art fairs like the Armory Show are integral to the entire arts ecosystem. They're connecting artists, collectors, advisors, and galleries in a way that few other events can do. If you're a collector and an art advisor and artist attending these art fairs, it's not just beneficial, it's crucial and it's essential. I hope to come back and talk more about the Armory Show and what's sold during the event. If you're a collector who acquires event from the show or someone who works for a gallery or someone who works with Armory, reach out to me and let me know what you'd like me to cover. If you'd like me to cover something, Reach out and let me know if you bought something. Let me know what sold. Uh, I would love to go over that here. So people can kind of get a good look and um, get a scope of what's going on and what went on, an interpersonal experience of what went on at the Armory Show. We'll cover it here and dive deeper into the impact these works are having in the contemporary space. Now, before you go, make sure you download my essential checklist for collectors at the link in the description below. Now, when you go to download, my platform treats this like a product. So just enter zero as the value you want to pay and you'll be able to download the checklist for free. A lot of people have been having a little trouble with this. So yeah, I'm not charging you anything. My system also does not give me your credit card information. All of that, just like every other system, it keeps it very private. That information belongs to you, not to me. So when you go and download, it's going to treat it like a product. So just enter zero as the value you want to pay and you can download the checklist for free. Now, however, if you want to leave a buck or two as a tip for the checklist, you can do that as well. You can enter any value as you want, but enter zero to get it for free. Every bit of support helps me to continue to provide valuable resources to our community. So I would and do appreciate any tip, but any again, no force, no pressure. You can leave zero. All right, guys, thank y'all for being with me today. Remember to stay curious about art and stay on the road to glory. This is a glorious road we're on. I'm on the road to glory. I am in a learning journey, a continued learning journey. I learn from you. I learn from those around us. I learn from the books we read. I'm on the same road you're on, the road to understanding this art world, this art more, this art market, dig into it a little bit deeper and deeper. We're in this together. We're on the world. We're on the road to glory. Stay on the road to glory. Again, I'm Mariah Elise, and this is Dear Glory. I'm out.